Hi there and welcome back to my channel. Uh, this video is a bit of a departure for me. Um, in my last video I showed you the forge and the anvil I built and I have been making a few blades since. And this one I wanted to film because it was a, a bit of my design, although it was very much influenced by other people's work. Um, but I wanted to put my own touch on it and I wanted to try some new techniques. And principally, uh, the two techniques that I wanted to try was adding a bolster to the handle. And secondly, I wanted to try a Japanese technique of hamon. Um, hamon is uh, an effect where you harden the edge of the blade, but prevent the spine of the blade from hardening. And it gives a beautiful pattern, which is very traditional on Japanese knives and swords. And um, so I wanted to give it a try because I was making a Japanese knife. So this was very much a journey of discovery for me. Uh, it was a very long process, so this uh, video is not going to be like my other videos with me narrating as I go. It's going to be a voiceover and showing you the process in fast motion. Otherwise, it would be the longest video on earth. Anyway, I really hope you enjoy it. If you do, please subscribe, leave me comments about suggestions, etc. And I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again. Right, so obviously we're going to start with the design stage. I originally got the, the, the master drawing from um, a great creator on YouTube called Blackbeard Projects, um, whom I've referred to before. Uh, but I wanted to give it my own, my own uh, twist. Um, I just basically needed the, the, the basic designs and proportions of an Akiri um, so that I got the look right. So obviously here just uh, I've drawn out the blade on some square paper and I'm cutting it out um, with a standing knife. It's as simple as that. Um, I also very much wanted to give this knife a forged look. Now, because I had a lovely piece of 1070 steel that was pretty much to size, I didn't have to forge a, a cast spring or um, anything like that. <clears throat> However, I still wanted the forged look, so I will be part forging the, the blade, but I have to confess it's more for effect, for cosmetic effect, than it is actual blacksmithing. So here I'm on, I'm on my Hegner saw and um, cutting out the pattern, which I will then draw out on the steel. Um, again, uh, I will give a nod to uh, the person who sold me the steel. It's they're very uh, they're very efficient here, based here in the UK. Um, this has been speeded up about fifteen times because I wish it was this quick when you do it. But cutting ten seventy steel on the band saw. Uh, was pretty tough um, and f in fact something happened uh, terrible happened during the lockdown is that my bandsaw motor burnt out so thank god about two days ago i managed to get a um a replacement motor which i've installed and i really don't think i could have done this project or at least i would have gone through a hell of a lot of sanding belts um so on to my uh home built 2 by 72 grinder, although it seems that the rest is now sliding away. Um, very, very um, useful and, in fact, essential for this kind of work. Um, to take large pieces of, of large amounts of metal off, um, Walter Sorrells, another great YouTube creator, um, showed, well, from him I learned the technique of using the edge of the belt um, to, to really pair away metal fast as well as doing the slightly more complicated uh, rounded angles or rounded pieces they're not angles because they're rounded anyway so here i'm taking away as much metal as i can to shape um, the steel into the basic shape and obviously that round part near the the uh, ricasa it was rather tricky um, and i've got these rather clever little um, uh, bits but they were very slow on this kind of steel so I turned straight to the Dremel and as you can see um, it's eating away the steel much much better and gave me quite a nice polish actually at the same time. So heated up the forge I was going to do some other things on the forge anyway and um, the knife goes in I'm only really interested in heating up the blade so that I can 
give it some wax, give it a bit of a shape. Um, and But it's not, you can see, I'm not really uh, doing anything to the bevel or anything because it's going to be the, si the spine that's going to show the effect. At this point, quite a lot of judgment was called for in terms of how much to grind. Um, but I didn't want to lose too much of the ground effect. So I was very much keeping an eye on straightness of my edge and making it true, as true as possible. And here I have, again, um, thanks to the great Walter Sorrells, um, I made the jig that he shows on his web, on his YouTube channel, um, because again, it's a fantastic way when you when you don't have the skill yet, which I certainly don't, of of hand making nice straight bevels. Um, this jig is absolutely terrific and very very simple to make. Um, I'll put a link to that video down below in the description. I didn't want to lose too much of the forge look, obviously, otherwise I would have wasted all my time, but I, I still give it a bit of a whack with a, a wire wool a, uh, attachment. And here I am putting on the very simple pizza oven cement, which is going to be the basis for creating the hum on effect. This is high temperature cement, which will create a difference in hardening between the beveled edge and where I'm putting the cement. Obviously it won't harden, it won't reach critical temperature in the forge. At least that's the thinking. And then later on I'll be etching it and that effect should come out. So here we go for the hardening after I've done most of the rough grind. Um, concentrating, as you can tell, very much on the edge being in the fire. Um, it got there pretty quickly because that beveled edge is, 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 quite, uh, is quite thin and into an oil quench. I'm sorry I didn't get the flames. You might appreciate my toucan socks, which are, are really quite colourful. Uh, I tested for hardness and the file just skated off it. And here um, I'm just taking the, the, the old cement off. But the file uh, was skating across the edge and not skating across the spine. So I was pretty pleased with that. Um, that was the result I was hoping for. So now I've obviously I've tempered the blade as well. I put it in an oven at 200 degrees centigrade for two hours. And now this is where quite a bit of judgment has come in because the danger is if you over grind at this stage, you could grind away the ham on effect. And of course, you've got no way of knowing until you put it in the um, in the acid, uh, which is later. So again, I'm being very careful. Um, I'm I'm but again, I've never done this before, so it was very much trial and error. And of course, at this stage as well, I've got to be terribly careful not to burn the blade. So I was uh, dipping in water a lot because I didn't want to blue the steel, um, which would have really wrecked the whole thing. And now I'm making all my sanding sticks. Um, I'm using uh, 400 grit paper, sorry, 220, 500, I think then 800 and then 1200 so that I get a really nice polish. Now again, this was risky because again, it was potentially my inexperience that I was polishing, uh, trying to get too much of a shine on the blade, um, which again might have ruined the, the effect of the hammer. But you know what? Trial and error, that's what this is all about. And at least if I've made a mistake, then you will know not to do it. Um, right, so now I am doing the long, long, tedious journey of moving through the grits on each side of the bevel. Incidentally, these knives are often, I, I researched it, and um, they, they, they can be made double edge bevel or single bevel. Um, both are totally acceptable in the Japanese tradition. Um, so going up the uh, the grits, there's a there's a uh, because I forged or hammered the the the, the, the blade, um, there was some distortion after the hammering, which I then had to hammer back. But so it was very unlikely that I was going to get a perfectly smooth finish, um, as you can see on this shot. Um, one side of it, the right hand side, has an indentation in it, which is not a, a mistake in sanding. It's actually from the hammering. I nearly forgot to do the edges. 
Um, so back with the sticks and the various grits. You know, it's so important when you use a knife and you're you're often looking at the at the at the spine. And so you want it to look nice. And again, the Dremel and these carbide, I don't know what they are actually, I don't think they're carbide, I'm not quite sure what they are, but they're, they're used a lot by jewellers and clockmakers, and, and they're, again, various grits, and I got quite a nice shine on the curved edges with it. Um, I try and avoid using them on the straight edges because they can actually dig in. And now the really exciting moment of putting in the ferric chloride. Um, I left it in for about 20 minutes, and... You, they're a very anxious 20 minutes because you don't know if all of that was worth it and it turned out that it was I was so happy um, when I washed it in, in water and then after this I washed it in running water just to be sure because it does eat away the steel but as you can see there's a beautiful ham on line um, I was so excited to see that and it means that I hadn't over polished it and yet I've still got the forged look so I'm really delighted with that. Um, I couldn't have hoped for better, actually. I was so happy I showed it to my wife and said, look at the ham on, and she had absolutely no idea what I was talking about. So now it's time to get onto the bolster and the handle. And these are three millimeter bit thick bits of brass. I super glued them together for, to help with the sawing, but I'm not sure actually it helped at all. The great thing about using a little bit of super glue is that heat um, will just make them pop apart very easily, um, as you can see here. And actually, that was probably just from the heat of the saw. It may have helped. Here I'm working on the bevels um, that are going to be on the blade side. Um, and I was doing that because, of course, once it's on the blade, you really don't want to do too much filing next to the blade in case you, you scratch it. So I thought it was um, appropriate and wise to do that at this stage. And um, I missed the bit where I, I drilled um, the the, uh, uh, the bolsters, and that's the bit I was talking about, where I'd forgotten to push play on the camera. But anyway, it was quite straightforward. I think it doesn't require much imagination to, to know how you do that. So I've epoxied on the bolsters, and I have to do that, of course, because I can't really mark out the, the, um, um, the handles um, unless I'd, I'd done this first. Um, nice as much cleaning up as I could with acetone and then I clamped them together uh, with an engineer's clamp and once that was done I could mark out um, my scales now I've got to tell you that you're going to notice that my scales change um, in a bit and that is because these beautiful rosewood scales that I got from China um, I, I messed one up uh, here I'm just showing how I reduce the brass rods to fit the, the three holes. There's a four, six and an eight millimeter hole. So they're all different um, sizes. And now you can see the new scales, which are uh, Golden Phoebe, a very beautiful Chinese wood. Um, again, I got these scales uh, uh, in eBay from, on eBay from China. Uh, they took a while to get here, which is why I waited quite a long time to make this knife. But I was very sad that I... I ruined the rosewood ones because I think the contrast between the rosewood and the brass bolster would have been lovely. Um, but we make mistakes and uh, basically what I've done, I marked the holes wrong and then when I drilled them they didn't fit. Um, and um, it was ruined, so I had to start all over again. Um, so anyway, here I'm uh, epoxying the, the, the scales on, clamping them, and here we are the next morning where I didn't film all of the grinding of the handle because I think that's probably quite self-evident. But you know, I'm just showing sort of rounding the... You know, I'm going to do a lot more by hand, but it gave me an initial um, uh, shape on the belt sander. Um, I wanted to make the, um, uh, the bolsters as, as pretty as possible and as shiny as possible because I, I like the contrast between the silver steel that I used for those pins um, compared to the brass... I thought it was a nice contrast, so it would be nice if it was really well polished. So I did a lot of filing, um, again going through grades of files from um, medium coarse, uh, probably twos, um, up to about sixes. Um, and again, to paying particular attention to the curved part. I know it's got a name and I can't forget what it's called. Um, <coughs> but again, the, the, the contrast of the round... 
um, with the, the very sort of geometric square shape of the of the blade. I thought was 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 important and aesthetically very very pleasing. Um, so I gave that a lot of attention, and I managed to get all the both of the uh, bolsters to quite a decent state. It was a lot of work and a lot of time, um, but I got there. And now sort of hand finishing the handle. Um, I could probably have done it a bit more. Um, I think I was getting a little sort of sanding crazy at that point. Um, I did as, as well as I could. Um, no, that's not true. I did good enough, <laughs> but it could still be better. I would have liked to have done it a little bit better than that. Um, and I suppose we're coming close to the bit where, which is very exciting, of course, where you see the whole thing together. You take the masking tape off the blade and the whole thing starts coming alive. And I suppose that's why I was I was maybe a little over anxious to finish the, the, the handle. Here I'm just using, again, some very fine needle files to clean up the steel um, and just do some light touches. And finally, of course, polishing up the brass. And this is a very exciting moment, of course. This is some tongue oil going onto the handle. And that's when it really all just comes together. Um, I think this is still my favourite bit of knife making, is, is when you finally see the hole. And I thought it looked pretty good, actually. So I ended up giving about three coats of oil. Uh, and I'll give it some more in the next few days. I think that's important to make sure that, that you know that, that it's very well protected. As I say, I'm delighted with the with the result. I'm delighted with the Hamon. I'm I'm I like the forged look. It might not be everybody's taste. I know some people don't like that forged look, um, but I do, and especially on a Japanese knife. Funny enough, I'm not sure I like it on all knives, but traditionally Japanese knives did often have that that look, and. Um, so overall, I'm I'm very pleased with it, and actually, it's uh, it's sharp as heck. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed it, and uh, please let me know in your comments. And as you can see, see it really slices a tomato. Thanks again.